company called Stacy and Whitback. We're a construction company, and currently we're working on the Tempe streetcar project. So what a streetcar is, is as you see here, there are all these tracks in the road that the cars are driving over. And eventually there's gonna be trains on the tracks, and there's going to be trains driving in traffic with the cars. And it's a public transit system so that lots of people can ride it, kind of like a light rail system, if you guys know what that is, or like a railroad train. So it's so that mass people can travel everywhere. What I'm standing on right now are the platforms. And so this is where people are gonna get on and off of the train so that they can access it. And so what we did is we started out and we had to get rid of all of the road that was here previously. So there was normal road where cars drive, just asphalt and they had to get rid of it and dig out everything and they had to dig out where the tracks are gonna be and then they had to put all the track in which are these metal pieces right here in the ground and then they had to pour concrete around it and they had to install this big platform which is concrete and then if you look up you can see the overhead wire and that's what powers the train so that's what allows the train to run like your car has a motor and this is what powers the trains that we're gonna have so before we even started any of this, there were already utilities in the ground. So things like the sewage system and other access points for different things that are already in the road that were built before the streetcar came along. And so before we even started working on any of the tracks that you see here, we had to move all of those utilities. So they had to move the access points for the sewage and various things like that. And so then also another cool thing is that as I was talking about the overhead wire, there are sections of the track that don't have any of that, and the train actually starts to run on battery. And so when it does that, the thing that's on top of the train that's touching that wire up there, right here is actually where it comes off. And that thing lays down on top of the train, and then it goes along the tracks. And as you see, there's no overhead wire over there across what that street is university and it just runs on battery. So it's actually a few sections of the track where it's not powered by electricity, it's just um, battery power, which is really neat and pretty unique. So over here is where the sidewalk is that already existed in Tempe, which leads along. And right now it's all been gutted out because what we're doing is this is where our access is gonna be to that platform over there, which is where we were just standing. And so as you see over there, there's a ramp and little bumps on the ground, which is now ADA compliant. So ADA is the Americans with Disabilities Act. So all of these sidewalks that were here before were put in before the ADA. A lot of the sidewalks that were here before were not up to ADA code. And so as we're rebuilding them, we're making sure that they're up to ADA standards so that people with disabilities or people that use wheelchairs are able to access the sidewalks and access our platforms, which is really neat. So what I'm standing in right now is a roundabout that the streetcar drives directly through. It's actually only one of three in the United States that has a light rail or streetcar passing through the center. And it's pretty neat that our company actually has made, built all three of those in the nation. So what happened is that this whole intersection, when we first started, we had to completely remove everything, again, move all of the utilities that were already underneath the roadway. And we had to shut down the whole intersection so that we were able to redo all of the roadway that you see going around it, that we were able to put in the concrete that you see that I'm standing on and that you, the tracks that are in the concrete. So we then had landscaping come in and this is actually a really unique roundabout because from up above there's a bunch of different circles in the center as you can kind of see here but they had all of this come in and reinstall all of the landscaping and redid all of the roadway and then all of these medians you see going out around the roundabout and the traffic lights and the signals and everything so all of this was completely redone from what it looked like before. So, hi, I'm Ryan Clark. I'm a superintendent on the Tempe Streetcar Project. Lauren had to run and do some other errands, so I'm going to take over for a little bit. But fortunately, you guys do not smell the portage on behind us, which is a staple of construction sites. Especially don't smell good when it's hot out like it is right now. But what we've got here is one of our subcontractors, Valente. They're a, they're a company based out of the valley here. And they're pouring a new ramp and sidewalk and some paver base. 
So this was a really cool and difficult section. You kind of can't really see it or you can behind the pole there where our track actually crosses over two sets of light rail tracks. So those are called double diamonds. They're shaped, you know, like diamonds. So we came in actually over Christmas and New Year's and we worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week for about two weeks to get this, this done. And now what we were doing is kind of coming in and upgrading the infrastructure around it, all the hardscapes around it. So that means basically the driveways, the sidewalks, and the pedestrian ramp. So they're pouring concrete right now. It's only about 93 degrees out. So it's a lot cold, uh, cooler than it was about a month ago when it was 115. But the way concrete works through chemical reaction, it, when it starts curing, the cooler the temperature is, the longer the guys have to work with it before it starts the curing process. So right now it's a little bit easier for them. Uh, so they're not rushing quite so much and we're able to pour in the middle of the day, but that's only because the temperature has now come down. So another, another uh, person we have on staff here, we actually have several of them. This is Mike Boward, he's our quality control guy. So he's on site here making sure that the concrete comes out at the right temperature, it came out of the right plant, it's the right mix. So all these elements come in before we can actually even do the work, we have to make sure that we have the right material that the owner called for and that we're putting it down through the means and methods that, that they require. So we have quality control, uh, supervision on every time we have a concrete pour like this going. Um, it just makes sure that we do it once and we do it right. So these are those double diamonds that I'm talking about. As you can see, the LRT, so the light rail train runs east-west through here, as does the, the one on this track over here. And the streetcar is gonna run north and south across this. It's actually only gonna run south. It runs south on Ash Avenue where we're at. So you can see we had to cut out the existing rail, add in new pieces, weld them all together, re-pour the concrete. There's a, a a bunch of rewind here, everything together. It's uh, it's a, it was an amazing feat, and the guys did a great job. Guys and girls were out here, like I said, rock, rock through the holidays, through some rainstorms, and got it done. And that's just what we do. Okay, so here, this is kind of one of those closeout items on the project where we're going through, literally vacuuming out the flangeway between the rail and the concrete here. Um, you can see it's depressed there. It's where, where the groove of the, the, light, uh, the streetcar train's wheel goes. So we're getting all that out. They're gonna go through, clean the rail, descale the rail. Um, and then they do essentially continuity testing on the rail to make sure that the current is traveling through and there's no brakes in it, that we're getting uh, good continuity through the rail. So. Basically, most of the stuff that we do, you don't see it. It's underground, right? And so we have a big system of communication and power that runs underground through here. So all those, those little wells and all those things that we, we do underneath, we have to make sure that we get them right. And we get our double checks and our triple checks. As I mentioned, we have our quality control representatives that are out here double checking our work as well. So this is just one of those kind of things right at the end of a project. We've been working on it for three years and then literally we come through and vacuum it every day. Uh, we paint, you know, repaint everything, touch everything up. And that way when we leave, it's uh, it's ready in the city and the, the owner of the project has a nice new, uh, new look to it and they're ready to, to move on and, and uh, we're ready to go to the next one. right here is on the streetcar track. This is the Tempe streetcar. This is the light rail. This is the Valley, Valley Metro's light rail system. So they have their eastbound and their westbound track here. And this right here is the point where it all converges. So just to the east of me past Dorsey Lane, where we're going to go in a minute, that's the final station uh, of 14 that are platforms that are on this project. This is sort of the end of the line to the east. This is also where at the end of the night, the streetcar vehicles get on the light rail track and they go back to the OMCE, where I believe you guys did a tour at uh, yesterday. So it all sort of ties together. There's one maintenance center uh, that they all go to when they, at the end of the night, when they need to get maintenance on them and they store them or they need parts or they need to be cleaned and, and then released back out for the next day. It'll come down the light rail tracks down here at the crossover. It'll cross over onto the streetcar track and 
it'll be ready to go for the day. So right here is where the streetcar can get onto the streetcar tracks and the light rail tracks. So some points and some switches in there that that uh, they operate. It, it basically diverts the train from that track over to this track, and then it's off for its day. Um, there's also a little bit of tail track normally at the end, which just means a little bit of excess so they can store an extra vehicle in case they have an issue with the vehicle. Um, through here, this is, this is kind of, like I said, this is where everything comes together. We do have, if you look across the street here, traction power substation. So TPSS number three in this empty lot. Um, this is sort of the communication and power hub of the project. Uh, all the conduit run underground out to the track and into the duct bank which then also feeds the overhead uh, OCS poles that Lauren was talking about. So that's sort of where all the communication and all the power to the train come from. So there's some art elements that go along with every, every platform. Um, you can see this foundation here that we've drilled with a, a big auger on the back of a truck. I wanna say these are somewhere around 12 feet deep and they'll have anchor bolts that stick up and then they'll mount the, mount the arc to that. They're also doing some more preparation for where pedestrians can access the platform. So you can see on this side, this uh, west side of the platform, you've got some, some curb, um, some wood basically framing out the curb. So they call those boards forms basically forming the curb and then the ramp to come down. So we'll prep all that out and get that all poured out and that'll serve as a, an access point for pedestrians to get up to the platform. So this is our main yard for the project. This is where we store all of our materials, all of our uh, equipment at the end of shift, the trucks that the foremen take out with the craft employees in. Um, we've got a little set up over here for some maintenance underneath the white tent. Uh, you can see just kind of the day-to-day -day basic stuff, the, the porta potties, you've got ice machine, we've got water, just everything that uh, the crews need at the beginning of the day to get ready. They grab their shovels, they grab their tool belts, they jump in their equipment, their dump trucks, and they head out to the site where they're working. And then at the end of the day, they come back here, clean up, and get ready to do it all again the next day. What we're standing on here is this this mountain, basically. This is now, I'd say, 30 feet tall in some spots. Uh, this is this represents all of the concrete, asphalt, a lot of the dirt and aggregate that's come off the job to this point. So we put it in dump trucks and we haul it over here and we dump it and then we kind of we sift through it and get the good dirt back out to, to use it for backfill at a later point. But a lot of this, uh, a lot of this old concrete and asphalt, it's going to get uh, at some point probably sold to uh, get ground up and make some new aggregate materials out of. Well, great. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the little tour of the Tempe Streetcar today. There's a whole lot of action going on out here. Uh, it's sort of starting to wind down now, so there's not as many people out on, you know, out in the field, but. Uh, it is a great career, uh, whether you enjoy working with your hands, enjoy running equipment, enjoy planning and building jobs. There's something for everybody on these jobs. So um, great paying jobs with a lot of security. We're always building stuff and stuff's always breaking. So as long as you can fix things and build things, you're pretty much always gonna be employed. Um, if you have questions about what you've seen today, or if you're interested and just wanna know more, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, love talking about this kind of stuff. It's really interesting. And, uh, and it keeps us always thinking of ways that we can grow and do it better, do it more efficiently, uh, ultimately make our company more money, make ourselves more money and, and just build a cool project and leave a legacy behind. Uh, when you build a project like a streetcar, something that's gonna be here for my grandchildren, to ride on and see. So that's really a cool thing. And it's something that I've really uh, grown to appreciate the more I work on these projects.